All right, video time. My telescoping golf clubs have finally arrived. My plan for this channel is slowly to transition over to, you know, golfing channel. But I want to be able to take my jet ski golfing, so I needed something compact. And that's where these came in. The heck is this? Now this looks like work in a box. What's going on here? All right. Brandon, you think you're so good without boards. I bet you can't even fix this. Ah, I'm going to show you. Well, actually, in truth, this comes from a, uh, a fellow YouTuber and boat video competitor, Wayne the Boat Guy. Apparently, having a plethora of tools and having done this hundreds of times, he thought I could tackle it quicker than he could. It's actually not that bad. Of the starters I've seen, this is mostly working. So let me show you why I wanted to tackle this for him. I have this tartar here, which is off a uh, 19, who cares, two horsepower. I bought a new spring, bought a replacement pulley, all spring, hardware. Even got some, uh, apparently whatever this stuff is for. The problem is, what's broken is the actual housing. This screw is supposed to go inside of there. But that, that's a huge hole for a quarter inch screw. I didn't realize that when I bought all these extra parts. So this is this is basically trash. I then bought this thing, which has been sitting in the background of my desk here for the better part of the year, which is an entire new starter assembly. Which used to work fantastically when I got it. Apparently it needs fixing too. Anywho, so I have all these extra parts to fix this. His uses the same parts, just in a different shape. So, I was like, you know what, I got all these parts. I've already spent all my money on it. Whatever yours needs, I probably have a spare for. Send it on over, I'll get it fixed up. At least, at least my wasteful spending won't go to waste. Well, you can't really tell, but it looks like the spring is coming in and out of its little housing with every turn. For its little clip. That's a little weird. Also, I think the spring is broken and bent over in a repair attempt. So, we're gonna need some work here. So, we should probably clean all these parts to start with. Clip off, pull and spring off. And that's kind of what we're left with. Open handle off for him. And we'll try to let the spring rewind so it doesn't blow up in my face in a minute. Which it will anyway. No doubt there. So you don't want to pull off that screw, so let's go ahead and pull off that screw. So our spring is probably still intact, avoid my face turning it over here. So if we compare that bent up spring to this spring huge difference so let's get this out of here and let it blow up on me no it didn't no, that's weird so aside from being bent well first i'm going to check to make sure this is the actual spring but aside from that it being bent is really its issue i think there is a poet that comes to mind Billy Corgan, one of his poems, he once said, cleanliness is godliness. Now, 
whatever your religious belief, beliefs or not, I think we can all agree when things are clean, they look better. Although, unless you're talking about an old truck. Yeah, that's up for, all right, anyway, so I'm going to clean these parts up to make them, you know, flow better. Looks like the original rope. No troubles there. There's hardware in there. All of it. And it's dirty. I have two of these. One I use for carburetors. And the one I use for everything else. And as the carburetor one starts getting old, it then gets replaced for the everything else bucket. And then I buy a new one. So it's kind of a little rotation. So, it's an old bucket. But it works. Let that soak in for a little while. While that happens... We'll go see if I have some rope or go over to the hardware store and buy some. So, I don't know if you can hear, but we have a little bit of stickiness there on the bottom, which is a problem. Let's clean that off. Now, I know my gloves are dirty, but have you seen the cost of gloves recently? I used to get them from my buddy Henry. He used to uh, get them from work and give them to him. And uh, he'd give them to his buddy Jack. <laughs> Jack would always take them and he'd say, hey, Brandon, you need gloves. You work on stuff all the time. Here you go. A few weeks later, Jack, I'm out of gloves. <laughs> Jack, Henry, I'm out of gloves. Now, Henry's not his real name, just so you know. So I'm not out again at work or anything. So then it became the. Uh, at one point, he was, oh, Brandon, need gloves yet? And here you go, Jack. <laughs> it was kind of funny. But then Henry went and retired, or the company stopped giving them to him, or both. Actually, I think it was both happened. So I had to start buying them again. This little bit of grease, that's probably the original Sea Lube, or I think they changed the name from Sea Lube to Lubricant A. And then from A, it went to Lube Rate 777, I believe. Turns to glue, common problem. Parts are out of the cleaning solution. Now we're gonna need some rope. This is eighth inch rope. Cut it down to 64 inches. And then we need to cut the, well, we need to protect the cut end from fraying. And actually, the 64-inch thing, I'm, I'm gonna have to double check. If it's not, if it's not, I'll uh, I'll come back and edit that out. Okay, grease is a problem. You can't get Evinrude C lube. You can't get Evinrude lube A. And good luck finding lube rate 777. And even then, all of those turn to glue anyway after a while. So, don't really have a good answer on what kind of grease you should use here. I find. Simple white lithium grease works fine. However, I've I've only really used it for a couple a year or two on my motors before they get sold or traded off for something. So I don't know how long it's actually going to last for. But for the time being, it works fine. So that's what I'll be using. We're going to lube up everywhere the spring touches inside of here. Some on the opposite side. Now, depending on what year your engine is, it's going to be a bit different. In the earlier models, you had this hole in the bottom, so you would feed the spring in through there to wind it. On this, you don't have that option. You have the gas tank hole, but the spring can't make that kind of turn to come down out of there. So it's kind of annoying. Older ones are easier, but what do you do? Get these zip ties cut. Now we're gonna place the 
spring in like this to load it. And it's pretty much going to unwind in the housing here. That never works. I don't know. You're supposed to be able to do that. It never works. Ever. So, I'm going to go back to sweating. Let it hang out, like always. Spring. Actually, if I do it that way, it might be a little, a little easier. It's supposed to put some OMC screw lock onto the screw, which, good luck finding that stuff. So, we use blue Loctite. keep the spring into the bottom pin right here while also keeping it into this slight groove right there. Now we're good. Now we just gotta wind this 15 foot long spring in here counterclockwise. Spring is all the way in there now. Give my hands a break. What it's doing is catching on one of these lips. There's no hole like on some of the top mounted springs. That'd be nice though, huh? Rope gets wound counterclockwise. I'm just going to lay the rope in here as one does. Install our top plate. Install a third. Can't install all four because then I lose my hole for the uh, all to hold it. tool right now. So 
screws are tightened. Now I should be able to pull and wind the rope without having to balance it in there. So we have our rope through here now. Now we need to go about four more turns. the rest of the way in there and feed the rope through the opening pin back in now I can reattach his rope rope through the front Put it into the hole there. Tie ourselves a good knot. Ooh, that is smooth. Last bit is our cotter pin. Well, whatever this thing's called. So that's it. It's running quite smoothly. Hopefully, I didn't get the rope too dirty. I did. Oh well. What do you do? So as time goes on, the rope might stretch out. Feels like there's plenty of spring there where even if it does it's still going to retract properly but if it does you can always push it through tie some un well cut the knot pull some rope back in retie it and it's fine so yeah job well done i'd say hopefully it works for quite well for him for a while so far it is for me so he didn't uh in the email he didn't mention the year and i didn't ask but it's a uh, two horsepower. Judging by the decals, it's a 77. Now, personally, I like the 76 decals better. I always have. But my preference. So that's that rewinder starter. Good luck. <laughs> I'll put a link to his videos below and or channel if you want to watch them. Hopefully I'll catch a follow-up video to this thing being used and running again. But we'll see. All right, everybody. Until next time.